Good morning, everybody. Michael the Maven, and today we're going to be answering some questions I've gotten recently about cleaning your full frame mirrorless cameras in the techniques that I personally use. This is just one man's opinion. I'm sure many of you have techniques out there that you love and you're comfortable with. I'll be asking for your comments on specific products. The product that I use is a little obscure. Most people haven't heard of it, but I've, I've really grown to love it over the years. And I'm going to go over my do's and don'ts for cleaning sensors in 2019. This changes, you know, over time. It may be something a little bit different in a year. So keep that in mind. The number one mistake that photographers make, I believe, even pros, I have friends that do this all the time, high-end pros, is that when they change their lenses, they do so with the camera body facing up. This is a mistake, okay, because we live in a microbe world where it's essentially snowing microbes and dust particles all the time. Okay, so if there's any kind of circulation in the room that you're in, you can just make the assumption it is snow, snowing particles into your camera. This makes me nervous, leaving my camera like this. And so if you minimize the amount of time that your sensor is exposed, you're not gonna have these problems as much. But eventually, no matter what, if you shoot a lot, you're gonna be shooting, you'll take a picture of something, and you're gonna notice these dust specks on every image in the same exact place. You can visualize this by setting your camera to F22, go outside, take a picture of it in the sky, and if you have sensor dust, you're, go you're going to see these gray specks okay, on every image. No matter where you, you change your composition, they're gonna be on every picture at smaller apertures. Side note on this is this is something you're going to want to prepare for beforehand, okay? so. You know, if you're getting ready for a big shoot like a wedding and you notice you have sensor dust, you're not going to want to wait for that order to come in from Amazon or run to the store. You, you want to have the tools ready to go. And so I would clean my sensors or check my sensors at least before weddings when I shot them. This is something that you, you're going to want to have these tools ready. And there, there's kits out there I've seen as much as 350 bucks, 220 bucks. It's ridiculous. You can get a good setup and a good kit for about 50 or 60 bucks. And I'm going to show you exactly the tools that I use and why I use them and some of the other common mistakes. Another quick side note is that if you see sun sensor dust on the top of your image, that means you should be looking for the speck on the bottom of your sensor. Everything's inverted, okay? Up and down, left and right. This is corrected by the electronics of the camera when it displays it. Human eye does the same thing believe it or not, is that our human eye, due to the shape of the lens in our eye, it flips the image and our brains correct it. There, if you, as another side note, if you want to read something really interesting, there was a guy, a scientist named George Stratton, I think, in the late 1800s, he made these glasses that flipped the world upside down. And he claims that after some time, his brain corrected it. So think about that. That's crazy. And uh, there's, there's other beliefs that babies see everything upside down too because their eyes haven't adapted. So who knows what that is all about. We're going to get into some of the do's and don'ts, but let me talk about some of the tools that I use real quick and make some recommendations. This is a, a magnifying loop designed to clean sensors. It's made by a company called Carson. It comes with a little really nice pouch actually, padded little case. 18 to 25 bucks depending on where you get it. And it has some wonderful features built into it. The one that I like the most is it has LED lights on the bottom. So when you put this on top of your sensor, it's going to illuminate the sensor. This rotating screw allows you to change the focus of the loop, depending on the flange distance of your camera. It will allow you to rotate as you clean, as you get access, as you're putting your cleaner into, into the camera. So it's a, it's a really nice little tool. The problem with this is, it was designed for DSLRs. And DSLR is the flange distance, which is the distance from where the lens mounts to the center, to the sensor, it's a lot longer. So the problem with this is, if you try to use this on a mirrorless camera, you're not gonna be able to focus it. So put this on here, and as you're rotating the loop to try to get it into focus higher and higher, it runs out of thread. So you're focusing right around here somewhere. So this is a problem. For Z6 and Z7 owners, EOS R owners, the Fuji students that I have, many of you have asked about this. And um, I incorrectly assumed that people would know just to kind of hold it. Some people don't want to hold it. So a solution that I've made, if you guys are interested, is this little adapter. It's going to work on pretty much all mirrorless cameras. 
And this is designed to fit on the bottom of this Carson loop like this and allows you to clean your sensor and focus depending on the length hands-free. So I've had a few students ask for these and I'll, if you guys want one of these, I'll send you one. I'll put the link in the description. Uh, I, I print these up on my 3D printer and uh, happy to offer that to you guys. I know many of you are pretty happy about that. So if you have a mirrorless camera, this is where I would say to start. It's gonna allow you to see exactly where your sensor specs are. Don't forget to use this to focus or else you're not gonna see it. But when you get it dialed in, you will know exactly where those specs are. The tool that I use is called Dust Aid. It is a dry cleaning tool. When I say dry, it means we're, we're not using any solutions and it works 95% of the time for me. I, I have a wet cleaning solution made by the same company and I have no affiliation with them. I just like their products. They have a wet cleaning solution. I've never had to use this, but I have it ready just in case. I'm not a huge fan of wet solutions and I'll tell you why in a second, but let me, let me talk about some of the things that I do not want you guys to do based on my experience. We've already talked about changing lenses with the camera body facing up. When you change your lenses, the camera should be facing down. It should be in an environment where it is not windy. One temptation is if, if you don't have the right tools on you, you may want to try to blow on your sensor. Do not do that because what happens is a little bit of spittle often ends up on the sensor and now you have something wet on the sensor, which is not good. Compressed air, don't do it. Do not do this. Do not use this on your sensor. The reason is the gas that, that you use to compress these often has a residue that comes with it that I have seen it on many lenses. Do not do this. Another thing that you should never do is a lens pen. This guy, these things used to clean lenses, do not use this on your sensor. If you use this on your sensor, I want you to unsubscribe from my channel. Okay, do not do this. And these lint brushes. This is another phenomenal bad idea. These are lint magnets. So I'm a fan of not putting things into the camera, but removing, removing things off of the sensor. That's kind of the mindset you should be in. With that in mind, uh, the question arises about using a cleaning bulb. These are these little rubber bulbs that you squeeze and it pushes air. And I'm about 50-50 on those. They're good when you have nothing else. The problem with it is people use them wrongly. Okay, they'll come in, they'll start blowing on their sensor. And when you do it from this height and this angle, sometimes all you're doing is just blowing the dust around in the sensor box. So the proper way to do this is to do this with the sensor upside down and then you would blow the bulb underneath it. I'm not a huge fan of them. I don't use it, but I know a lot of people love them. So real quick, when we're talking about wet solutions, um, I'm not a huge fan of these. They do have a common place when nothing else works. The problem with this is, is that when you're putting a solution, a liquid into a camera that might have something that dissolves and you're wiping it across the sensor, you can create streaks. And I have seen this countless times. And what happens? Well, you got to get another swab out to clean it up. That's why I'm not a huge fan of them. It, it, it creates headaches and this product, this dry product is pretty good. It works almost every time. Sharp objects, not a huge fan of sharp objects. Sharp objects like, such as tweezers trying to grab particles off your sensor, super bad idea. So let's, let me show you dust aid and how it works. Usually I am like this. See how it kind of balances it and holds it there. This allows me to see what's going on. Dust aid is essentially, it's a silicone rubber pad. That's all it is. In the past, it used to be a sticky adhesive and uh, they stopped doing that. And so what they do now is they make these little cleaning pads that allow us to clean off the pad before we put it on the camera. So take this strip off. So this is pristine, clean. The idea is that you clean off the silicone pad. Now this is clean. I'm going to take this off for the sake of demonstration. And then you simply touch on the sensor gently and lift up. And that's it. That's why I love this solution so much is it works. It's not wet. It's fast. It's easy. You can see it. You can do it. When you run out of strips, you don't need to buy the kit all over again. They sell the strips by themselves. These are like nine or 10 bucks. This is something that most 
people can do. So you don't have to stress out about it. You don't have to you know, worry about ruining your sensor in terms of my steps. This is just how I do it. When I'm done with it, I put it back into the case and I close it. Why? Because I don't want lint getting all over this thing and using it again. So talking real quick about wet solutions, I do believe eventually you might get a spec that the dry solution I showed you will not work. It's good to have a kit on hand and I trust Dust Aid because he's changed his strategies over the years and probably something happened with different sensor coatings. So sensors are coated with different things and this is why you shouldn't use this generic solution that you buy from some off-brand because some of those solutions can cause streaking. Some of them might actually affect the coating of the sensor. I cannot speak for all the different products out there. I'm sure there's many of them out there that work awesome. I would love to know in the comments how you guys clean your sensors and which ones you like, and maybe we can just share the knowledge and all benefit from it. But the wet solution is, I like it because he gives you like 60 of these pads, or 50 of them, um, and the idea is that you wrap one of these pads around one of these spatulas and it allows you to clean different size spatulas. See that? Pretty cool. Uh, and basically all you're doing is you're taking out one of these sensor cloths. I'll show you real quick. See how it's in like two Ziploc bags? Very thorough. So I know this solution is safe. I've used it. I can't speak for every camera, but I know it works right now. Uh, you get the cleaning cloth and you basically make this little spatula. And you're going to pull these corners down and around so you get this one nice straight edge here. So when you get that all kind of worked out, you have these little clips that you put on. That's the idea of how it works. And it tells you how many drops, depending on the size of your sensor, or the size of the swab you're using. Definitely, if you're using wet solutions, do not do this over the camera. Two or three. See it dropped, see how I'm dropping here on the um, poster board? So once, that, once that's ready to go, then you would obviously come in here and clean your sensor. So in quick summary, if I were to give you my top tips, number one, try to avoid introducing foreign objects into the camera from blowing to putting things in there, things of that nature. Second part is to try to visualize what you're cleaning. I think that's probably one of the best tips I can give you. So if you can see, you can clean it. Third tip would be to only clean the part of the sensor that needs it. Don't clean the whole thing if it doesn't need it. Four, try a dry solution first. I like dust aid. I know many people will use the bulbs and they're happy with it. If that doesn't work, then you may need some deep cleaning. Go with a wet solution. I know many of you may feel anxious about this and you, you want to take it into a camera you know, store and have them clean it. And I understand that too, but I do this all the time and I've never had any problems. So if you guys have products that you know work, I would love to know in the description below. I know there are a lot of them out there that do. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you next time.